For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall not believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My whole outtake on Christianity is you can learn a bunch of things, several things, mostly a bunch of key questions about how did the trees get here, where did the ground come from, who are our ancestors, things of that nature. But if you read the book of Genesis, you'll see that the answer is right there to your questions. God created heaven and earth. He created the sun, the moon, and he created basically what you see all around you. My whole aspect of the situation is, why do leaves die? It's a question that I had asked to me many a times before from elementary school children from Benjamin Franklin. Why do fruit go bad? Things like that. Where do flies come from? Everything on this planet has a purpose. Whether you think it's a reasonable purpose or not. God has brought it here for one particular reason and one particular reason only. As you grow old and things change, God made ways that things can last forever just by losing one leaf or just by losing a family pet or a loved one. We don't have a timeline here. Everything that you see that's going on around us today dictates that there's only one chance to get things right and one chance only. My whole aspect on everything is a lot of people say, God, why me? I say to myself, why not me? We're not supposed to be here forever. Yeah, it's a big luscious planet. It's a lot to go around, a lot to share. But think about it, if we did live, if we did live forever and our population continued to grow, where would everybody go? Everybody would be on top of each other. You see the same person every single day. And you gotta realize, this planet is not as big as most people think it is, but it has a huge mass. Now, coming from some information that I had found on the internet about the end of days, the end of times. Yeah, it kind of makes me nervous, but now as I study more research about it and I read more about it in the Bible, it doesn't bother me as much as it did when I was a child. Because I know I'm saved. And I make this video to try to save others and warn others, let them know that God is still there for you. Just give him your hand and he'll guide you. I have some flaws in my life, but I know I'm not a saint. Everyone's a sinner in their own particular way. Whether you're a bishop, whether you're a reverend, whether you're a deacon, whether you're, you're an apostle or any of them in their church affiliates. You could be a sergeant major, you can be a soldier in the Salvation Army, but it doesn't make or break you of who you are, but God knows who you are. So if anybody tries to tell you anything different, just don't listen to them. Now, my whole aspect on the church life, I don't go to church every Sunday. I did when I was a child. Didn't like it too much, but you gotta understand I was a child. Most children don't like too much of anything, unless it's fun and games. But now, I came to realize that the church is a good place to go. It's a sanctuary, it's a home for many of people, black, white, Hispanic, Mexican, Greek, yeah, even if you're Muslim, you're still welcomed in the Lord's house. He doesn't knock or he don't separate anyone. But all he wants you to do is just praise his name and believe in him and him only. Like me, I put no man before God. No one should put no man before God. I remember when they first built this church. I keep procrastinating saying I'm going to go because I'm saying I need a church home. But getting a church home doesn't make you a Christian, doesn't make you saved, doesn't give you the uh, ordained power to actually realize that there's something in life that you need to gather that God hasn't even already given you yet. 
He gave you the ability to speak. He gave you the ability to see. He gave you the ability to do all types of things. When I used to go to church, I used to get offended by a lot of things. And that's maybe why I stopped going. Church doesn't matter what kind of church it is. A church can be an old house. A church can be outside. As long as you're preaching and you're worshiping his name, it doesn't make your church better than the next person's church. I can have church in my basement with just one light bulb in the ceiling, but guess what? Everybody will have a good time because they're praising that one man that's above. I'm looking at churches now with automatic doors, cool ventilation systems. You gotta remember back in the days in Jerusalem, there was no automatic doors. I don't even think there were doors at all. They were always open for anyone to come into. There was no ventilation system. They had the handout fans. If that, they didn't have them, they made fans themselves by the leaves or the cutting of their garment. Like, I sad to say time and time after time is that it's a lot of sinning that's going on in our neighborhood. A lot of murders. A lot of drug dealing, just a lot of nonsense, but don't think you're getting away with it because God sees everything, and trust me, your days are numbered. It's going to be a time where, as though, if you don't repent or you don't come down and bow to him and let him know that he's the only king that you will ever bow down to, that you respect him for who he is, your life will be a whole lot harder than what it is now. God has the power right now to send huge hailstones by the hundred pounds of by the hundred pounds of peace to actually corrupt and destroy our planet right now. To just not to destroy the whole planet, but majority of it just to make an example, like for him saying, Yes, I'm still here and, and I can do this. This is my power. Say for instance 9-11. A lot of people say Oh, this is America. This is the home of the free. This is the home of the, bla the brave. God bless America. God bless this. God bless that. Okay, you can say God bless America. God bless this. But you can't sit here and think that things like that can't happen here. Because we're so free. No, we're not free. You're not free until you accept Christ into your heart. So that way you can set yourself free. And you can be free unto him. My whole outlook on September 11th. It, it, yeah, it scared me. And I prayed for the families of the victims. Yeah, I did. But my question is this. Did they pray for themselves? Did they accept Christ at that day? Why did they jump out the buildings and take their life? They didn't know how their life was going to turn out to be. The building collapsed. 79 people survived the whole entire collapse. And the, and the plane impact. So you, don't, you can't judge your life. Only God can. He has the power to give you life and take your life. It's like you're having a toy and you take the battery out of a toy. Only you can give that toy the power to keep going. 